Hey guys, welcome back uh, today. We're going over a couple of articles and this one in particular is from Outkick, written by Ian Miller three days ago. And um, the title is PETA is very mad about dog show winner with NFL ties, says they oppose speciesism. Um, I'll be very interested to see what Ian has to say about this topic because, um, well, it's not even that big. Okay, hold on. <laughs> It wouldn't be a day that ends in Y without PETA being mad about something. This time is about something as harmless as dog show results. Recently, a French bulldog was awarded best in show at the National Dog Show in Pennsylvania. The Frenchie named Winston had NFL ties and is also undeniably cute. That didn't seem to matter to PETA. Okay, so first thing off the bat here with French bulldogs. Let me see if I can open this. I want to zoom in here. I want to see if I can zoom in. Okay. So, um, brachycephalic breeds, right? I'm trying to, I can't really tell, but does his airways look restricted to you or open? Because it, it, from this angle, from what I can tell, it looks to be pretty open and it looks to be well-bred just from this initial video. I can't tell for sure. I don't know the dog personally, but like, like initial thoughts. Like if you're going to be mad about something with a Frenchie winning in a show ring, that, that would be, you know, something that might, some people might complain about. <clears throat> Where most of us see a cute French bulldog in a mostly inoffensive con contest, PETA sees shameful torture breeding. They released a statement denouncing the dog show victory, setting aside the fact that this is a trade show. <laughs> uh, um, okay. Designed to help promote the breeding and sale of dogs when the country is experiencing a dog overpopulation crisis that results in euthanasia and severely crowded animal shelters, this year's best in show is shameful in another respect. Okay, first off, PETA, let's address something here. Only unethical breeders are contributing to that problem, right? Ethical breeders who give a shit about their dogs, who give a shit about their health, who give a shit about having dogs with amazing quality of life are the breeders that they, I mean, they exist. First off, let's first off acknowledge that those breeders exist, okay? Secondly, let's not give them a bad name because those breeders are not actively adding to the population, an overpopulation and putting dogs into shelters. Let me tell you why. You know why? Because these good breeders have contracts with the people they sign. And it is within their contract that those people already know, have already consented, have already been educated, hence me. I bought, I bought a dog from a breeder, oh my God. <laughs> that these dogs have to go back to the breeder if, they, if that person can no longer care for them, right? That is very standard, very standard with a good breeder. So let's just, let's keep that in mind. Let's keep that in mind, okay? Um, in other countries, including without Europe, breeding bibs, I've never heard this before, breathing impaired breeds. I feel like they just made that up. Like, can someone like comment down below? Because I have not heard of bibs before. Breathing impaired breeds, it sounds like something legitimately just made up by PETA to categorize and to just provide hate. Is referred to as torture breeding. Yeah, that, they totally made that up. Because French Bulldogs and other bibs can suffer from an uncomfortable, debilitating, and sometimes fatal condition called brachycephalic syndrome. Hello, brachycephalic dogs. That makes them struggle to breathe, run, play, or experience the joys that make a dog's life worthwhile and make hot weather hell for them. Listen, that is all true. I mean, some things can be true at the same time, right? You can still have good breeders who don't breed for dogs that are inhibited with their breathing and have good quality breathing um, breeding practices. But then you also have the ones who don't take that into consideration. Like both things can be true at the same time. It's not, it's not black and white here. Um, just because they exist doesn't mean they're poorly bred and they're living a terrible life. PETA urges people not to breed or buy any dog, let alone those who are physically punished by breeders 
PETA urges people not to breed or buy any dog, let alone those who are physically punished by breeders who have robbed them of a real nose and who cause them to struggle for something as basic and vital as taking a breath. That's not physical punishment. Like physical punishment is like hitting your animal. That's like genetic manipulation. And I just, I can't, I can't with this. All right, let's see what our friend Ian Miller has to say in this last paragraph. You can always count on activist groups to overact to, to everything. French bulldogs are apparently tortured into existence and don't experience the joys that other dogs do. Um, newsflash, some dogs have a naturally good ability to smell things and they've been bred for that. And some dogs do not. They've also might not have been bred for a good nose. Some dogs are just kind of in the middle, kind of a a, a toss up of what their what traits and characteristics are gonna have with how good of a nose they have. Like for the puppy I'm currently raising, she has a fine nose. It's not a bloodhound nose. It's not a beagle nose. It's not like she spends all of her life with her nose to the ground, right? But she can smell. Is it her strongest suit? No, her strongest trait is her eyesight. And of course, being from a line of working line poodles, which are bred to hunt and to retrieve things, um, you know, that makes sense that you would want to breed for a dog with more proclivity to use their eyes than to use their nose. I mean, it makes sense. The organization's motto highlights their inherent absurdities. According to them, Using animals for entertainment amounts to abuse and speciesism. Okay. PETA, whose motto reads in part that animals are not ours to use for entertainment or abuse in any other way, opposes speciesism, a human supreme, supremacist worldview. Okay. Imagine typing these words out with a straight face. Someone, multiple people, in fact, likely has to do that multiple times a day. You're right, Ian. Yeah. Human supremacist is one of the more absurd things you'll ever read. Only PETA could imply that treating animals different from humans is some form of supremacy. I mean, we are the dominant species on the planet. Like, that's kind of just de facto how it is. <laughs> I don't know how that, like, relates to supremacy. Hold on, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Let's define this. I think I've ever defined supremacy before. Hold on. What is it? Supremacy. The state or condition of being superior to all others in authority, power, or status, the supremacy of a king. I mean, like, I think that's used correctly, right? I mean, wait, what? Well, hold on. Hold on, rabbit hole. Hold on, hold on for a second. Superior. Superior. What's the definition of superior? Higher in rank status or quality? Higher in quality? Okay. Um, higher standard of quality? Greater in size or power? So that makes sense. I mean, humans are greater in size or power than a lot of species on the planet. Bugs kind of win on that part, though. There's always going to be more bugs than people. <laughs> Above yielding or being influenced by? superior yeah i think like in the context of greater in size is is like the most accurate term honestly i guess it's better than the endless gaslighting about white supremacy from the left but barely um gaslighting i think the other side is the one who's doing gaslighting but okay uh, so next time your dog misbehaves, just remember that telling them what to do makes you a human supremacist. And PETA is watching, ready to discipline you for supremacy and having the wrong breed. Uh, I mean, very, like, I see what he's saying, but at the same time, he didn't add anything to this conversation. I feel like in the, like, the last five minutes of this video of me just starting it, I gave, I gave much more information just because I'm a dog trainer. Right, like Ian is clearly not a dog trainer or someone educated in in animals, and obviously, I don't. I, I think both sides. Like Peta doesn't have any right to like be this slanderous, and Ian, like, where's your argument? There's, I don't. Why is this? What is Outkick anyway? 
who are they? Anyways, that's it for this article. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, things to think about, and um, I hope you guys have a great rest of the week. <laughs> I'll see you guys next time. Bye.